last episode, well, the last thing we did was we loaded a save, which is something I really do, don't like doing. But I didn't do it to cheat a result. I did it because I didn't realise you couldn't roll the two results. You had to pick A or B. So if I fail the roll, I won't load the game. If that makes sense. I think it makes sense. What sleeping dock worker? Is it you? Who the hell are you? Uh, the woman still has her eyes fixed on the photograph in her hands. Background the radio plays. Snap your fingers in front of her face. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Snap your fingers well, twice. Who are you? Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis, you've jolted her back to reality. I was actually hoping you could tell me Never that. Never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in the traffic jam. In the 50s. Chads of contempt. Wait, what's so bad about the Men 50s? Have small jewels and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? When else would you Back be then? in Mefke, during the time of the revolution, the sidewalks and coffees are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new boy date of picture starring Gabriel Buenguerro. Until you come along, that is. Who is who's Gabriel Buenguerro? Is Gabriel Buenguerro. He shows you the photograph in the lavish amber frame. She's very voiced. Strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a, a wide brim hat. His hair so dark as an oil slick and his jaw is the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. The man's got a hold over her. Even 50 years later, you can he feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. He had used it to faint in the aisles of the cinema whenever he came on the screen. And a schoolboy used it to memorize all his lines. She leans back, savoring the world she's conjured up. In all likelihood, it's a world that's only ever existed in her mind. So, I take it you were in Meske when you were young? Someone was. He nods as though her meaning was perfectly clear. Someone? Are these not they your memories? someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? She gets grasped They are suddenly. beautiful. That is all that so, matters. Beautiful and true. And they will win. They are coming for this, you know. All of this. She looks around. All of what? The world? The present? I'm going to interrupt your dreaming, man. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, low man. It was early spring, and the man behind the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was gold. Her eyes narrow, and she appears to take your measure. But you people were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution. In Mefke, it was a golden age. Right. I have some other questions for you. Police questions. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. She settles her back against the railing of a motor lorry. Behind her, mountains of memorabilia, photos and knickknacks line the dashboard. What are you hauling? Diamonds. Diamonds, really? Of course not, she says, grinning. But wouldn't it be marvellous if I was? Okay, but what are you really hauling? She shrugs. Whatever stupid thing they put in the lorry, I imagine. So you don't know what you're hauling in your own lorry? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. She smiles a careless smile. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for cargo, if you know what I mean. She says that as if something narcotic is the real reason. Wait, you're getting high off you driving a lorry? Oh, it's so much more than high. Where I go, Zahi, it's low. I don't know if I pronounce it right. I go to the bottom. She closes her eyes in reverie. Yeah, it's definitely some kick. Some terrible kick. Pale, probably. Pale sounds like it's the shit. What if the cargo is contraband? Then it's contraband, lawman. What? Do you want to take this old an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad hand. Amengildo. Bad hand. Amengildo's bad hand strangled three hundred people. What? What can I say? Some people really like strangling people. 
Uh, I really don't get understand this uh, Boyadero Gabriel Boyangero thing. Of course not. To truly understand Boyadero, you need to listen to to on the Western Plain. Okay, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with the daring Boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the Western Plain. I'm guessing that doesn't happen. Well, of course not. The boy Darrow returns from the Western Plain a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Magritte, she pleads him to give up his riding and settle down. In the background, you can hear the orchestra swell as the screen fills with a maiden's imploring eyes. I think I can see where this is going. The boy Darrow strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magritte, then rides off because the Western Plain is calling to him. That's not where I thought this that was going. You have to understand, a true Boyadero needs a whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by a man or a woman. His beloved was selfish. He didn't know what it was to love a Boyadero. What if to truly love a Boyadero is to float lifeless downstream? Before I came, you seemed away. He's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to the things. He doesn't think she's the smuggler. You hear that, Lawman? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Wait, why is that, Lieutenant? I think I just don't think she's connected to anything. It's because of the pale. Doesn't want your frail mind to be caught up in it. And this woman has spent time in the pale. A lot of time. Did you drive a lorry if you get like that? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best camoneers around. I drive routes no one will. What routes? Uh, Lomonosov's land, Udan, Udaknaya's Zemlaya, the Western Plain. She nods, closes her eyes again, letting her mind submerge. A terrible cold comes over her, rattling her teeth. She sh stares inward. The Trans Catla Magistral, U 41A, as Astradas do Mirador, all the good ones, the deep trenches where the bluebirds fly. She opens her eyes again and shudders. I'm something of an expert in blacking out. You should take better care of yourself. He looks you over and scoffs. You're right, Lawman. I'm the one who should take my health more seriously. Thank you for looking out for me. Correct the phrasal. You're quite shabby. Is that all you woke me up to say? I think I know what's going on with you. And... And what is that? She sticks a filter cigarette into a cigarette holder, reaches for the light. The pale driver. You transport goods through the pale. Great, the lieutenant conceded with a headshake. He's asked the Pines rep about the pale, and now he's talking to everyone about it. Fine then, he sighs. Try not to black out again, and don't contemplate. We don't have time for that. It's deaf, but for the universe, and we're contemplating the living shit out of this. Oh, I'm contemplating, Kin. I'm drawing existential, ex existential conclusions from this. Exactly, what I didn't want you to do. He sighs and turns to the woman. My, my partner wanted to know if you work in pale transport. No offence, but your partner, he lights a cigarette, white and silver cloud of smoke disappears into her mouth. Seems like a bit of an idiot. He breathes out. The air tastes sweet. Publica, a filterless cigarette from Nesk. I blacked out from sheer heartbreak and lost all memory of the world. Like Gabrielle Buengero and Saguarami Paracio. She nods and smiles unkindly. You're the opposite of me, then. I, I remember everything, even the things I never knew. Things you never knew? The smell liquor on Gabrielle's lips after the shoot in the motor park. The roses on the day of Van Consenegro's coronation. And the grand stairs of Rael. Smoke was a fouling peace when Dolores Dyer was shot. The lock on her face, like an organism, the wound on her chest, a hand in my father's hand. She closes her eyes, her eyelids trembling, except I never had a father, and I never shot her innocent Dolores Day. Over radiation? Broke doses, Zarif. Heroic. Isn't that dangerous? Thought insertion, dithering, the Grad Cutler Magistral. She savors the lungful. It's more than dangerous. It's sad. But at first, I had to make a living. Now? 
when you've seen it go all when you've seen it go all away like that rolling off like the sea and then come back to this he gestures at the square broken horse monument the clanging of machines in the distance what are we doing here thousands of years Gabriel it doesn't have to be like this we can just give up we can just become vapor what does it look like the pale like looking into the ocean at night in the dark and you cannot see it but you know it's there and it's big bigger than anything bigger than all the other things combined what does it feel like nothing until it starts when you're deep enough then for me it's like autumn dark gray and orange the orange of street lights and the colors of trees and the electric light the smell it smells like autumn too it smells terrible nostalgia cooped up in the cabin shaking terrible nostalgia for yourself humans too much to bear she loves it how do you pass through it in the belly of an airship iron steel windows so you don't look straight into it it's not advised to look into it not on this lorry then no the same one a roller they're all nowadays special wheels for connecting to the floor of the hold she points to the machines clumped up like toys their wheels are all small and round multi-axle trailers one last thing you said we can just become vapor yes no elaboration but I've got a new point of conceptualization and I'm gonna level it up getting dangerously high I feel like I already have what you have in some way. They say there is a point, one that I have crossed in the pale super deep, straight to a far off cross on the U-41A on Lemonosov's land, where every step you take is one step further from home, no matter what direction. It's a point you cannot come back from. Your mind becomes so radiant with the past. There is a flip. She flicks the ash from her cigarette. Instead of writing, erases memory, nearing some kind of. She shakes her head. Indescribable finale. Maybe you've been down the motorway south. She looks at her cigarette, almost out. She swallowed it hungrily. And it's you. The motorway south? It's a story us long haulsmen tells long haulsmen. Very f not pale drivers. Way beyond the established pale. It's lit by radio frequencies. But it goes silent and dark. The process begins. Erasure. Kilometer by kilometer, in any direction. The motorway south is the road you cannot come back from. What is the end of the motorway south? No one knows what's at the end. He takes the cigarette out of the cigarette holder and extinguishes it. I've only glimpsed the beginning. <gasps> I've only felt it in the distance. When I was a child, she goes silent, her eyes closed and a handshake. A child, rowing on the lake. Yeah, I've got two voices, don't I? Um, hmm. Um, uh, it was that, wasn't it? Motorway South. Minus one visual cal calculus. Bizarre angles. The edge of the map. The landmass begins to disintegrate. The pure trigonometry. The ocean melts, becoming a tangle of sines and cosines. The mountain range turns into a sharp angled azimuth. Its green rain shadow dithers, like music turning into a waveform, then vanishes. This is the end. A half remembered textbook from your childhood. A porch collapsing on the edge of the Isola. A transition from reality to pale. A single vector shoots out like a rocket. It's the motorway south, splintering off from the known pale. But where? Where does it go?
We can get rid of that, maybe? I want this one. But, like, I don't know how much time I've got left. But that seems really interesting to me. No, I've got to scratch my nose. Um... I can't forget because I just spent that bloody point. I've only felt it in the distance when I was a child. She goes silent, her eyes close and her handshake. Child rolling on the lake. Ma'am. Oisiana. Oise Sigh escapes her lips in silence as she stares within herself. There's nothing more to do. She's far away. She's receding. The clutches of some indescribable scattered emotion. A child descending. Fried both of your brains enough for today, Detective. He inspects her. No response. Let's get some air. This one's far gone. He his head silently as he turns to leave. Let's talk to Joyce. No, I'm going to go back. I'm going to do that thing now, because that's now suddenly more interesting. Conceptualization. There. God damn it. Is it that? And if I fail, I fail. Right? Because that's what I said. I loaded my game not to cheat at the roll, but because I didn't know that you could only do one of the roles. And I'm doing it now because I want to do that motorway thing. Keep forgetting about that door. We'll do that next. Come on, John. Present a sound investment plan. Yes! Deploying high concept buzzword generator. All systems functional, ready to engage in three, two, one. It's time to disrupt the future. You've got to say, stay lean, innovate, and focus on what matters most. The children. Still the union boss's idea. Add a twist and present it as your own. Very capitalistic. You should invest in a youth centre. Youth centre, huh? What kind of youth centre? Place to train buff kids. Come on, tell him what he wants to hear. I don't know now. If I actually believe Everard's doing it for the good, oh, he's doing the entire town. What he wants to hear is the future, the future leaders of tomorrow. Not buff kids. That's what I want, but obviously, one to inspire the future leaders of tomorrow to public service. Hmm, the man thinks for a moment. I like that you're thinking about the future. 
but couldn't the centre have a more economic focus? One dedicated to instilling liberal economic values to children of low net worth families. Brilliant! Damn it, that's what I wanted to do. Without children who'll be there to buy stuff in the future. Without children who'll be there to buy stuff in the future. Yes, if it doesn't work out, we can always repurpose the centre as a shopping mall or private equity firm. When knife closes the door, it opens a window, yes? What's the expected return on this? Highly educated, work ready, human capital ready to be towards any number of your vast interests. Human beings is always a risk associated, which is why we've got to hold on to the centre itself as a fallback. Oh no, I don't want to be into ultra level to level territory. Very impressive. You've got a natural eye for unusual investment opportunities. I know. I don't normally do this without a formal pitch deck. But to hell with it. What's the point of being rich if you don't have to f if you don't have to follow all the rules? Here's a, r a round of seed funding. This should be enough to prove th uh, out the concept and get things off the ground. Ka-ching! What a little bee. Sp speed, vodka, cigarettes. Thank you for placing your unwavering trust in me. Remember, it's not a handout, it's an investment, and I expect to see returns. The lieutenant stands there, dumbfounded, his mouth opens slightly and closes again. Are you having a stroke? Kim, are you having a stroke? No, I'm not having a stroke. We're just still full of surprises. Most of them bad, just some good. The lieutenant has granted you an aura of legitimacy. Bathe that in. Don't let your fascination show. Played cool. I feel dirty now because of that ultra liberal thing I did. Look at that. I just wanted to see if I could. Hundred mu real isn't anywhere near enough to invest. Was that worth levelling up my conceptualization like four times? Probably not. <laughs> Never mind. Let's go into that room there. Yeah, that's a shame. I need to level up one more time to get that thing as fast as possible. Because there's a risk of me running out of time. Funny that I stole his idea there. Blow the grime. Dark neon poster reads, Van Eyck, totally transcendent. Okay. Oh no, it's around the back, isn't it? Message has been carved into all trans nation, Ike nation. I get points for those bubbles, I think. Uh, 14, yeah, but I think it's like one.
You hear the sound of running water? Somebody's washing dishes. Shut your ear against the door. Someone is moving around in the apartment. You hear the water being turned off and the sound of dishes clinking together. The tenant must be cleaning up. It means you're too late. Nothing more to do here, but better report back to Everard. Knock on the door. Answer. No, you're in there. That already defeats the point, doesn't it? Kind of glances at the surrounding windows. Let's get out of here. Use Mayana's key to unlock the door. Key stops midway in the lock. Something's blocking the path. Not a sound coming from the apartment. Then it's keys in the lock. Uh, the lieutenant looks first. Uh, looks first at the door, then back at you, then signals you to back off from the door. As you turn to leave, you hear footprints from the other side. Yes, when he's definitely home. We should talk. Lieutenant whispers and go talk with Everett. Tell him what happened. Don't open the door. Maybe there's a workaround. Uh, no, because we've already told him. Yes. That's interesting. Didn't get any experience in that, so. I can now afford all the books. What else am I going to spend money on? I'm going to talk to Joyce first, though. can I help you with? I spoke with the lorryman at the roundabout. Yes, my eyes on the harbour have sent word to that effect. What have you discovered? Wait, where exactly are these eyes located? Doesn't really matter. And I do apologise for the surveillance. Wild pines can't afford to be blind at times like this. One of the, the tall buildings overlooking the roundabout, most likely. That would give them a read on the entire quarter. In any case, it's a relief to know that someone has looked into it. When I ask, will there be an official investigation? I assume you have discovered there is an operation. If there is an investigation, it will be a part of an ongoing operation. Subject to conf confidentiality, I'm sure you understand. Of course, detectives. She says, her tone more cautious suddenly. In any case, you've held up your end of our arrangement. I trust you with the rest. Now it's my turn. I wouldn't normally break protocol like this, but my situation demands it. If you don't solve this murder, I'm afraid we may have bl a bloodbath on our hands. Words bloodbath sound cold in her mouth. A taste of iron and strawberries. What was that, that about a bloodbath? Yes, I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with a possible consequence for all of Revitol West. Since you're sharing, ma'am, this is also an RCM worst-case scenario. Then we're on the same page, as grim as it may be. Tell me, how again, how the lynching and the strike are connected. I have an indirect role to play. I'm sad to say my employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me, in that the moment they elected to deploy a private military contractor, as an insurance measure, called it my security detail. A momentary lapse of faith. They were dispatched after I relayed the union's initial offer. Every worker, a member of the board, she nods. I tried to convince my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric or a joke. It did not appreciate, appreciate the humour. Do you need a security detail? Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the union into surrendering. Who are they exactly? Colonel, the Orange Yeh's military company. As far as I know, uh, uh, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but they do not answer to me. To be frank, the relationship is deteriorating. They wear ceramic armour and have semi-automatic weapons, and years of combat experience. They have also trauma and stressor disorder, and no idea how to conduct themselves in an urban civilian environment. So what happened? The story is, one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman. While he was drunk and separated from his unit, this allowed some of the more militant Union members to subdue him. 
He was taken out the back of the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. What then? Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me in the harbour. I've not been able to discuss the matter with anyone there. The remaining two Crenel contractors carry out their orders for now. For now? The smokescreen? In secret, they've been conducting independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded, executions will follow. What is the nature of this so-called investigation? Whether, it is, whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. It'll be all of them. This decision is already made. Investigation upon investigation. Here in Martinez, racing towards some dark deadline. I have to say, this is not Disco. It is very far from Disco. A wave crashes against the side of her boat. My only hope is that you provide a single concrete suspect or the mercenaries indiscriminately pick up theirs. Simply put, she leans against the wooden planks. If you do not pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at, at the lynching. This, in turn, will force the Union to respond. The Debordoirs have over 2,000 men. It will be 1,000 to 1. Have you seen a hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? She leans back. It's not pretty. These men in work, work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually impenetrable to muzzle loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. The muzzle loaders need to be reloaded after every one or two shots, the automatics every one or two minutes. You're silent for a moment, then concludes, as I said, a bloodbath. Isn't this a pretty bleak scenario you've been describing? Many bleak scenarios have already come true. He looks at you, eyes damp from the wind. Lieutenant Double Yefator Dubois. Ooh. Which one am I going to get rid of? Data Birth Simulator? Uh, so my logic... Yeah, I don't need that. Let's get rid of it. Data Birth Simulator. It is a minus one to all physique for passives. Let's forget that. Instead, we're going to get the motorway south. It's going to hurt my visual calculus, but I reckon I'll be fine. Lovely. What can you tell me about Crenel? Not much. The public resume is relatively good. As far as private military contractors go, I believe they were once called Downwell. They boast a long list of clients. St. Baptiste, Welshman, Lorentz, uh, Eindracht. Warning sign, however. The operations concerned all take place in third or fourth world countries, guarding facilities, escort missions, and such. Meaning they're used to operating in war zones. Yes, all good conflict corridors. Supramundi, Isat, the Seminese Islands, countries that don't have a good record reporting atrocious military conduct on their soil. Okay, anything else you got on them? Sadly, no. All this happened, I had little interest in them. Now that I do, I don't have the resources, she thinks. You still have access to ICP's database? You could run a better background check than I ever could. It may take some time, though, she thinks. Do you know a lot about the inner workings of the RCM and the I ICP, ma'am? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was prepared to deal with the RCM. I did not think I'd be dealing with a group like Cranel. Could you contact the company? Tell them to call it off. I have, and they will, however. These, the orders take times to reach uh, what is basically a rogue unit out on the field here. Until they do, it's all on us. She's being truthful. She's pressing them as hard as she can. She said the deceased assaulted a woman. Or he didn't. She tilts her head. This information is passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around a canal. I cannot testify by it. Who did the passing on then? The remaining contractors, their tribunal, it's what they believe. What did these teenagers by the canal say? That the men, man was killed before he, because he assaulted the local woman. I asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. This does not come as news to a two, but still, exchange exchanges a glance of you, your knowledge. Where did this assault take place, if you know? Last Sunday night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates, supposedly the colonel was drunk, maybe on narcotics too. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, the group of dock walkers got their hands on him. Uh, 
I know the woman you're talking about. We have it under control. Good. Then you've made progress. It's imperative that you move fast. The tribunal will not be patient. Colonel, the one who was hanged. Did you know him? If you mean, did I see him alive? Yes, but I did not know him. His name was... Lely. His service name. A nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. Bad sign if there ever was one. Tell me about the others first. Uh, one is a man. Corty, they call him. Nickname as well. The other a woman. Phyllis de Paul. Forty is the gunner, I believe. De Paul is the radio operator. Lieutenant cuts in. What would you say was his eye colour, the deceased's? He closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face, then shakes her head. I can't remember. The pang of regret to her voice. Lieutenant was te testing her, asking a small detail first to see if she knew him better than she let on. Passed. That's alright, ma'am. Anything else? Nationality. What would you say was his age? He was 40 or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. Made it difficult to estimate his age or gauge his facial expressions. Uh, this matches the dental reconstruction we saw on the body. And Classier also mentioned it, I believe. He says to you, then turns back to Joyce. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was Occidental, I think. Light brown hair, a mix accent. Hornier's or Messinean. Maybe? His injury gave him an accent of it all his own. In a way, it was humanising. He had to learn to speak through it, through the injury. He nods. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. Where are the two remaining mercs now? They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. She raises a cautionary finger. One, they're likely to be armed to the teeth. They don't have the same respect for the Revachon citizens' militia as I do. Put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes. Ghetto savages. Uh, it will not be a fruitful meeting. We still need to know where they are. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know the scab leader is one of them. We're likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to m mediate if I don't appear involved. Didn't buy the pines. Clothes didn't fit right. Scab leader. But yeah. One is obviously the scab leader at the harbour gates, one chanting idiotic slogans. He's barely maintaining his disguise. The other has a vantage point in the building south of the roundabout. They were keeping tabs on you while you were canvassing the drivers. One must be the goon in ill-fitting work clothes by the harbour gates, the scab leader. That may be so. She's poised and unperturbed. I still hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. For all your talk of averting this catastrophe, the situation at the gates is a powder keg. Does it, this not bother you? Of course it bothers me, Lieutenant, but if my hands are tied, how would my employer react if I, if it appeared I were intervening on behalf of the Union? Your concern may be of appearances, ours is keeping the peace. One is probably in the building overlooking the roundabout. That would afford a good vantage point, she says. In any case, it's practically inaccessible. Where's your radio? Or for contacting them, if I may. Do you have an earpiece? Heavens, no. Uh, I'm not an undercover agent. There's a short wave at the ship's wheel. Nods towards the sloop's cabins. I have another question for you. I can answer it better. How much time do we have? Till the execution start? Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Um, not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. There's a brief silence. Seagulls squawk over the bay. Matter of days, not weeks. This is enough for now. I'm sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. If there's anything else I can help you with, please ask. Now can you tell me about these tattoos? Show her the photo. Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. He reaches over the guard wire and takes the photo, holds it in her hands. About half a minute in silence. It's taken with the tri Trigat not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Stay quiet. Observe the woman's expressions. The mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo surface. Surface. What do you think? Sorry, she breaks her concentration. I was trying to see if I could read the web of interdependencies between these points. The stars. <gasps> of course she can she read the night sky. Uh, she points to one of the on the photo paper. I can't. That's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters. 
numbers, or anything. Their size, locations on the body, and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Like stars in the sky. Close. Port cities. This is the Orangier's map of the waterways. A sailor's tattoo worn by the wayfarers of the DeLorean century over 300 years ago. The sailors would mark their bodies to map their tra travels. Who else would know this? What is the use of this map? Sailors' souls would use it to fly back home if, if they should die aboard. This is sort of a contraption to be reeled in by the silver cord, they would call it. Where is he now? Spoken to him. For now, the soul is fastened inside his corpse. She remains unfazed. That is precisely what the sailors feared when they drew these maps. Fear of drowning within one's own corpse. Like, she doesn't care when I'm really weird. She cares when I'm unprofessional. Like when I speak about the gun. Uh, what, record, what travels did the dead man make? Quite a few, Fred, I thought. The Orangier's capital traditionally stands on the right shoulder. She points to it on the photo. He started somewhere near here, I think. What's next? Then he made his way to the Preto Grande, though what I think must be Stard Scanal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Prest Preto, he sailed to the Intilindic uh, Ocean. First, the Seminine, Seminese, Seminese Islands. Then this. She points to his heart. What's th what is that? Revachol, he says. Those are two constants. Red Fort on the shoulder and Revachol in the heart. He started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulende, the dawn of the inter isolary age. The old world passing by and the new world already here. You said you can't read it. I can't. This man is, was no sailor and these are not no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. Martinez, looking into Crenel, he writes it in one. The man puts down his pen and rubs the temples both sides. What? A speed of core. In Martinez, looking into Crenel, he writes in one. Then the man puts down his pen and rubs his temples with both hands. Outside there is a siren. Distant gunshots on the streets of Jamrock Quarter. The man is no brother of mine, but this is his service history. Make sense to me? We have no more use for the map and the, the waterways, just like we don't need sailors the way we used to. This is what the custom would morph into in the Occident mercenary tattoos. All the boys looking for an adventure, blood spatter on the seas. Who could tell me more? His platoon members? The other contractors? Though I do not suggest you go show them that picture. The man was their friend and comrade. Challenge accepted. I say we do it. I need the information, mark it down, ask the mercs about the tattoos. Do what you have to, Detective Dubois. I don't think deciphering that tattoo will come before public security, but if you should wade into the mob to find out, I couldn't stop you. You will be careful, ma'am. That's all for the tattoos, thank you for your help. Okay. Thank you, that's all for now. I know that's there, but we're going to keep it as a surprise for the next episode. going to tease you with it. Uh, no we're not, because I can't save my game. Ha <laughs> ha! The wasteland of reality. And obviously, there's a chance I've called the episode that. Uh, so it'd be really mean to... Um, you know, to call the episode that and not read this bit. Congrats, your server. It will take, you, take a while for your body to remember how to metabolize anything that isn't sugar from alcohol. You're going to have to be pretty. You're going to be pretty ravenous soon. Eat plenty. You can expect your coordination and balance to improve in a couple of weeks, two months. You might start sleeping like a normal person. All the recovery will take years, though. It will be depressing and it'll be boring. Don't expect any further further rewards or handicaps. This is how normal people are all the time. Plus one to psych. Uh, yeah, that 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 hurts me quite a lot, to be honest. I'm tempted to get rid of it. 
I would have to level up twice to make use of it. Very tempted just to take that, to be honest. Um, I need two level ups to do that. Right, I'm, I'm, I actually am going to let you go now. I've been John Proxy on Channel Donald West? No, it's not Channel Donald West. It's not been Channel Donald West for several months. It's the proximity, and you're now leaving the proximity. I've been John Proxy. I, I mean, I, I mentioned that already. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. I'm getting I'm closing in on the end of this adventure. I can feel it. Probably could have finished a while back. I, I like being fun. I enjoy this game. So I'm going to enjoy being fun. To the point that I'm min-maxing stats that don't really matter to me. Anyway, thank you.